Hello, I'm FTX Toycat, and I'm sure you've heard me say at some point before that the water bucket is entirely OP in Minecraft. In fact, I made an entire 20 minute video dedicated to talking about all the uses for the water bucket in survival Minecraft and all the sorts of things that you're going to need to usually do. But one of the big responses to that was like, hey, I know water is really great and it can do so much, but when you're playing in creative or when you're building, you don't really need those uses. It doesn't matter that it can save you from full damage if you use it just right. Why should it matter if you can do all of that when your main priority in Minecraft is the building aspect, not the survival aspect. And that's where today's video comes in because the water bucket is not just crazy underrated in terms of what it can do for survival, but also it's crazy underrated in terms of what it can do for your building, both in survival and in creative. If you wanna make water machines that have random layers of water falling from the sky, that's a thing you can do using water. You can clear items using this little technique too. It's not real water, but it can clear away torches and anything else that can be brushed away. It's not real water when it hits the ground, but yet still it can clean away any blocks that you happen to leave there. Isn't that a super handy thing that water will do for you? And in today's video, I'm going to be explaining concepts like how this works. I'm going to explain concepts like the coral trees, a thing that is entirely possible if you know how to use water correctly, and including things uh, like the inspiration for this video, which is where I want to start, because I saw a really cool Reddit design where someone had said that, hey, I've worked out a way to put torches in the most efficient place for a farm, so that way you don't waste it around any of the outsides, and it's a really good use of space to put a fence in your water and then put a torch on the fence. This is entirely possible, and it also means that you can have this weird situation where I can stand above water basically, uh, you know, like I'm not touching anything, above the water which is really, really strange, right? There's lots of weird things you can do along these lines, but here's the best bit about this torch technique. You might think this is pretty cool, you might think this is pretty clever alone, but then consider the fact that because water logging works that way, you can put a bunch of blocks in water and they'll still work, what you can actually do is you can, for instance, cover the top half of the water up, it'll look like there's no water down there, but yet your, uh, you know, your plants, they'll stay watered and cropped still, and then you can place torches on top of this if you want to, or even you can start placing more dirt, more crops, etc. You can basically half the space that water takes up if you so want to, because as you can see, if we look down here, the water takes up the bottom half of the block, but it still counts as a full block of water. And this counts no matter how tiny a bit of water you want to use. So just to show you a, uh, you know, like a, a more extreme example, here's us using a quarter of a block of water, again, just the top quarter, or we can use the bottom quarter, and it's going to have the same effect. As you can see, none of these crops are getting unwatered. They're still just as soily or uh, moist or whatever this is actually meant to be. Uh, they're just as watered and ready to be, uh, you know, harvested because water is still there, no matter how little water we're using. The craziest thing about this is this means you can also use redstone circuits at the same time as your water, which means that, yeah, you can double up on having both water and a redstone system. With that redstone system is to harvest your crops, or whether it's just for simpler, uh, something as simple as turning on lights. Look at this, the redstone works just fine. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of wonderful in my opinion that not only can you turn on a light, but even if this is unrelated, the redstone repeaters themselves will generate some light and they'll display it through the water. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I should mention uh, a lot of things uh, placed, a lot of things are placeable in water only on bedrock Minecraft. So I believe redstone and levers, uh, both of which, by the way, you can place in water if you want to. Uh, both redstone and levers are only placeable in the bedrock edition. I'll show you a list on screen right now of the differences between bedrock and Java when it comes to water logging. Uh, the reasons for this is because the water logging system on Java is a lot more, I guess let's call it basic. Uh, it's not, uh, whereas on bedrock, you can have multiple things on the same layer. We, you know, theoretically it'd be possible to combine half slabs of redstone repeaters. Stuff like that is possible because of the way bedrock is coded. Java is coded in a much different way, which means things like having a minecart go through water, which even a lot of bedrock players might not know about, is entirely possible because you can have most blocks, with very few exceptions, things like torches, etc. Most uh, things can be placed in water in some way if it is a partial block. And that's kind of crazy and cool if you ask me. So one of the things on the list that surprised me is the barrier block. Again, most of them I was like, oh, that's odd. I didn't know that was only available on bedrock. But apparently you can have water in the same block as a barrier. Oh, that is cool. You can have an invisible... Oh, that is really useful for map makers. Yeah, that is really interesting if you're a map maker or you're just interested in making weird effects. Using barrier blocks, what you can actually do is you can have, like, water that flows from nowhere, but you can't get through it as a player. Like, oh, I'll just flow up to that water. Nope, there's a wall right here, and you'll know it's barrier blocks, but still, that's super goofy, super wacky, and hopefully good for map makers. It's very confusing to look at as a player, though. <laughs> it does have to be said. So the only other one I didn't know about, again, this is a bedrock exclusive, but if you are, uh, you know, using pistons, you can actually waterlog them, which is surprising because pistons are a full block, as best I can tell. I mean, 
uh, as you can see, it takes up a full block. But despite that fact, you can waterlog a piston, i.e. you can make water come out off a piston, which is really, really strange because the outside of the block isn't actually water filled. You can see that it looks like it is, but it sort of isn't at the same time. So I guess a piston, as far as the game code is concerned, is very slightly smaller than that, meaning you can have water flow from a block where it shouldn't be flowing. And that's actually a big point of what we're gonna be raising in today's video, because you can use this water logging effect to have water come from very surprise, uh, to have light come from very surprising places. So uh, yeah, if you don't know, First of all, let me show you a really basic one. If we have a redstone lamp, let's say, let's uh, have a lever down there. If we have a redstone lamp and then we cover this thing with water, actually, let's uh, light that up first. So here we've got a redstone lamp. It's activated by a lever, a lever which, by the way, works even if we get water on it, which is handy. But we have ourselves a redstone lamp just over there. It's really cool, right? Because the redstone lamp water, uh, light will go through the water. Water does not block light, which is, you know, intuitive, I would say. But here's the interesting thing. That means you can have water store all of the light from the block below it and then if you want you can water log uh, you know like that water if you want to and you can have uh, you know these two effects combine and you can have the light go through water through a half slab into this there is basically a solid block under here but yet the water can go through this works for anything that can be uh, water loggable that also uh, transmits light i.e. almost everything so if you have a composter fill the composter with water, and then you have this weird situation where this composter with water in is generating light. It's gonna confuse a lot of people because maybe the composter alone people might understand, but the compost with water in, huh, odd. This ability for water to still transmit light basically allows you to hide your sources of water. A lot of people are going to see this and be like, so you've got a glitchy composter that's transmitting light. They won't realize that you've got a light source underneath it. Very, very handy. But then you can use the same thing to do the reverse. You can hide your water if you want to. Uh, so that you can have something stay alive even though it shouldn't. So let's say you have some coral blocks because who doesn't love coral in Minecraft? Uh, if you don't love coral in Minecraft, then clearly you haven't played the aquatic update enough because coral in Minecraft is one of the more beautiful blocks, but as we all do know, coral dies if you leave it away from water. It becomes one of the uglier blocks in the game and uh, I guess it's like a human in that way. Pro tip, if you don't drink water in the real world, you'll die. So drink some water and then also put some water next to your coral, right? This is a thing you need to do. But if you have water directly... Uh, uh, you know, like underneath a coral, it's kind of obvious what's going on there. However, you can do some clever things such as, uh, for instance, if it's up against a wall, However, we can of course use stairs and slabs and all of the blocks I've mentioned so far, including pistons by the way, which again, seems a bit wacky to me, but you can actually use this to keep your block alive because a waterlogged block counts exactly the same for a coral. This coral is kept alive. If someone breaks it and is like, wait a minute, there's there's gotta be some water under there. It's like, oh no, there's, there's a piston under there. And uh, yeah, you can use this exact same logic to be like, so uh, let's say we wanna keep a coral alive next to this villager's house. I mean, they've got a sad house anyway, right? What we can actually do is if we place some stairs and then place the other stair a little bit differently, just like this. As you can, wait, why did that place like that? Whatever, if, if we place some stairs, oh, it placed sideways, that's why. But if we place some stairs and then we place another stair, just like this, I, it's really hard, even in creative, to properly place backwards stairs. Okay, there we go. So we have some stairs that look like this. It looks like we're doing a little bit of a pattern going on here, but we can actually waterlog these stairs right here. What looks like it is just a block of, it looks like a plank, right? It looks like we're going for something here, um, but that plank will keep the coral block alive and therefore you can do some pretty cool stuff. And it's worth mentioning that obviously uh, almost every block is gonna start flowing outwards. All you have to do is block the one side of these stairs, which is flowing outwards. Because again, if we have like this, it can flow left, right, backwards. But if we have it like this, then it's gonna not work the same way. And it'll keep flowing if we do that, but not if we hide that. This actually makes one of my favorite weird build ideas possible because I love different colored trees. I've mentioned before, I think Minecraft should have more trees it would just be a cool, easy addition to the game. And uh, an example of that that you can make yourself if you want to, besides using pink wool or something, is using coral. I don't know why, but coral seems oddly fitted to trees. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, but as you all do know, if you do try to cover trees of coral, just like right here, you can see how actually you're not the fill command, the replace command is not built for this clearly. But if you try to cover it, oh, we used coral, not coral blocks. Well, let's try that one again. See, look how much water we caused, by the way. Okay, there we go. As you can see, if you try to cover trees with coral, very quickly they die. It's very sad. Even using the command like this, it's not enough to keep the trees alive. They look beautiful for a few seconds, but then they fade and they die. What's the solution here? 
I would say, I mean, you could just put water inside a tree and like cleverly craft it that way. But uh, yeah, all you have to do is like waterlog the inside of a tree and then you can hide the things on the outside. So we place a block here facing inwards, just like this, as you can see. And then on the outside, we can have a fire coral block. And yeah, this is all you have to do. You have to hide on the inside some waterlog things, which means even if people do break it, there's not gonna be much water for them to find. If you use pistons, they literally won't find any. It'll look like a tree that's made up entirely of pistons and other things. You can even use the leaves that are already in the tree because leaves and water work as well, fun fact. Uh, but you can use the leaves that are already in the tree to do the same thing. And this is marvelous if you ask me. So yeah, we can put water on the inside of trees if we want to, which means you can be ready to like surprise launch water at people. I don't know when or why you'd want to surprise launch water at people this way, but again, the fact that it's possible, really cool. As I'm sure you all are also aware, you can have TNT, and if you have levers in water, you can even activate it in the water. The cool thing about TNT in water is it doesn't do damage, but as you can see right there, it can do, uh, you know, it's launching effect still. I guess saying in creative it doesn't do damage isn't the most impressive thing. So here I am in survival, as you can see, uh, you know, just for the sake of this one thing, we're gonna stand in the TNT, and yet we're not going to die. We take a, a hit of damage, as in non-zero damage, but uh, yeah, we don't die. That's right, one of the earliest Minecraft concepts, the TNT cannon, one of the earliest redstone concepts, I should say, um, is something that you need water to make because water's just that darn useful. But again, the TNT cannon isn't my area of expertise. It's not uh, the area I claim to be the best at. It's something that is really interesting that you can dive into. If you like launching people, it works in survival, it should be noted, but it's mostly a creative or half survival, half creative nonsense thing. But if you're into redstone things anyway and you wanna know how I made the water contraption that just kept on flowing water down earlier, all it is is as simple as like, it's redstone on a timer. This this is all I like to make with Minecraft redstone because it's really easy. Just have a timer that goes on a certain loop and then as long as the loop is about a second long, the water starts flowing just long enough to make these little slices. Again, I believe this is a bedrock thing to make these slices, but these little slices will allow you to do like, allow you to like swim for a temporary second in Minecraft. Again, bedrock exclusive, the way the swimming works in a partial block of water. Don't ask me why. But uh, yeah, this also means that you could swim for a little gap if you wanted to. So as you can see, we've got ourselves a little staircase right here. Um, if we wanted to get through there and we timed it just right, I'll admit it is a hard thing to time. You can actually get through the gap just like this. And it's pretty cool in my opinion that you can have like a little water machine that makes that possible. Also, if you really want, you can extend the timers on this uh, a little bit further, which we'll do right now just for the fun of things. Uh, we can extend the timers a little bit more and it should extend the amount of water that outputs from being a single little slice to being a full on block. Oh, we, we need another repeater to do that, it seems. So we'll make another extra wide repeater. Now they're gonna be, it looks like it's three blocks long. Is there no middle ground between that and nothing? Nope, it looks like it's three blocks or it's a partial bit of a block. Oh, there we go. Nope, we're back down to... Oh, this... Now this way, they get smaller as they go down. Look at that. That is even stranger in my opinion. But yeah, it's a thing that does happen. I'm so confused as to why and where this happens. Yeah, something about that piston. Even though it wasn't doing anything, it was changing the size of the water. I've just found out something as the video is being made that, again, this this is just sight next to the water, but it causes a lot of it to disappear. Maybe because it's flowing into the piston in some way? I have no clue what is happening here. But yeah, uh, bedrock bug, or maybe bedrock feature. You can never really tell what bedrock is. <laughs> there are some downsides. Or maybe this is an upside to someone. I really can't work out what you'd want to use this for. But it is a thing that is a thing. By the way, it should be mentioned that, uh, you know, water is also a great way to move active TNT. So if we summon some TNT, as you can see right here, I'm gonna <laughs> push some water in. As you can see right here, the TNT is going to flow alongside the water, meaning you can actually, if you have like a TNT detonation point, you can have the water, uh, the TNT flow in various directions. And because it can still do damage, or at least it can do the, you know, pretense of damage, uh, even though it does zero damage, it still hurts, you know, in big air quotes. You can uh, basically move explosions around and knock people around and stuff like that. It's fun for mini games or something like that. It has to be mentioned. So this whole video has been made very deliberately in a plain spire and it's been made at night. So I can show you the lighting effect and show you so you can see water in its most natural color, a kind of deep blue. The Minecraft water we're all probably used to, or at least you're used to on Bedrock. It's very slightly different on Java, but it's fixed on Java all the time. Whereas on Bedrock, you might not know this, but it changes based on the biome. So again, I guess this is now uh, you know, water things you can do that are really cool on bedrock, but let's place some water in the jungle and you'll notice how it's slightly different. Or if you don't notice the different and you're saying, ah, Toy Cat, I don't know about that one, that sounds like a made up feature. Because you know, a lot of 
things that people do spread are made up features. Let's show you another biome. Let's go to the extreme hills biome and let's place some water here. Does this look different to you? Does it look at like a deeper blue than you're used to? Nah, this is definitely made up. Okay, what if we go to a tiger biome? You can see how this is a much darker and less clear blue. In fact, you can see the transition as the biome starts through the form of the river like, huh, as it turns out, there is a slight change. I think the one that proves it the best though is actually the uh, the swamp because every single biome doesn't just have a different water color. That's the most widely known thing. It has a different uh, you know water transparency, which means that in the swamp biomes, you can see way less in the water. And although this makes swamps an annoying place to be for survival, for creative, if you remove all the grass, you remove any reference to this being a swamp biome, Let's say like so, don't ask why this is such an ugly block, but let's say you do something like this and then you place yourself some water, the water's now gonna look super ugly. By by changing the biome that you make things in, even if it's in, you know, super flat or whatever worlds, you can make super weird, super strange, uh, you know, super bizarre water that you might be able to take advantage of. And this doesn't just cover uh, overworld biomes, which is where you're most logically going to encounter water, but it also covers the nether. And although most people will never notice this because like, ah, you can't even place water in the nether. You can't naturally, but again, because we're covering creative, as you might guess from my flying around, uh, mostly here, if we say do our same coral, uh, you know, fill again. So coral, the, the not the block, but the regular thing. Ah, whatever. So as you can see right here, the water in the nether looks very different, doesn't it? Because the water has a really, in my opinion, nice red tinge here in the nether. Again, you're not naturally meant to be able to get this. So I, I, part of me says, why did they do this? Another part of me says, I love that they did this. It's got such a unique feel and look to it. And it's got the same kind of nether tinge where you can barely see towards the end of it until you spend some significant time in here. But yeah, w nether water is amazing. It's a thing you should totally play around with. If you want to add water to the nether, by the way, you could just use coral, which I used there. You can also just literally fill it, I believe, naturally. There you go. Look at that. We filled water in a 10 by 10 cube. Uh, yeah, you can put flowing water if you want as well. And of course, it has to be worth mentioning. It's different in the end as well. It has this kind of purple tinge to it. Uh, I don't know. I, I like it a lot more in the, the, the end. Look at this purpleness. It's it's great, right? The background radiation, it's more visible. It's, it's a wacky time to be alive when you place water in the end. And uh, I think I have an upcoming survival project idea that might involve using water in the end, just because I love the concept of it so much. Anyway, this video was meant to be the same thing to you. I was, hope this video taught you about the concept. Hope the video taught you some things that, uh, you know, maybe you learned or something. Wait, can you waterlog end crystals? By the way, strange pro tip here, but because the end crystals with gates around them come with these, it's really tricky to blow them up, right? But if you put them in water, then there's no more trickiness anymore. So if you have issues killing the ender dragon, like I sometimes do, then now you know. Here's an easy way to do things. And also, the water you place will look super cool when it flows down to the ground. And oh, look at this. This is a weird rendering glitch. But yeah, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, you can like it and let me know. If you want to see my eventual... Again, I've got some end project in my mind. I don't know what it's going to be. I've got like a lot of ideas floating around. But if you want to see that future end project, it's probably going to take me a long time to put together. But uh, you can subscribe with notifications turned on and you'll see that and all the other survival projects that I work on on this channel. Um, and yeah, if you didn't like this video, then I probably don't recommend subscribing with notifications turned on because then you will see more of my videos every single day on your homepage, which maybe isn't a good thing to you. Maybe you hate that. Maybe you think, wow, this, this British guy sure won't stop talking. And if you think that, then good news for you. Here's the outro. Goodbye.